moment of prayer, and we were led in prayer by Representative Mac Jackson and Representative Mike Gladden. But I told them this morning, God did just what he planned to do. So what we asked was, God, let your will be done. And he did his will. He brought Bob home from labor to reward. We won't forget Bob, a very quiet, unassuming guy that did not seek the spotlight. I've spoken to Adam many times through the years, and I'd look in the back of the church and Bob would be sitting there. He never thought to come to the front of the room. He just wanted to serve his district. It's an amazing thing about that service. If more of us would take that example. For the good of those we serve and not for ourselves. It's not about the camera because it's not about us. It's about what we do for those who have entrusted us with making their lives better. Bob tried to do that. I always remember him as my friend. And I will cherish his memory. Let us keep his wife. Lee and his children and grandchildren in prayer. For God does not make mistakes. To God be the glory. Thank you, Representative William. Now I would like to uh, ask to come to the board and send it to Lester Jackson and Representative Mickey Stephen, both from Chatham County, Savannah, Georgia. God is good. And all the time, I stand with my colleague and my friend Ricky Stevens as we pay tribute to Bob Wright. And I served with Bob under the gold dome for 12 years. And I'm telling you all of you that Bob was a friend. And he was more than a friend to me because most of those 12 years we drove from Savannah to Atlanta and from Atlanta back to Savannah a lot. And you know a lot about a man when you travel four hours on the road. Uh, or when Bob was driving, it was three hours. <laughs> but on those roads we traveled, we, I learned that Bob was a devoted family man, often talking about his wife and his children. Bob was a true Christian, because he loved the Lord. And oftentimes he talked about church and coming to his church or he was talking about what's going on in my church and doing, talking about, or we were trying to understand scripture from the pastor of the day. But what Bob was, was a worker. Because I'm gonna tell you, Bob didn't need this job. Bob in his life had many titles. He served in the army as a, as a ranger. He served in the city as a city employee and retired. He served as a DJ. So Bob had many titles and many jobs. But Bob, but for Bob Ryan, titles were good, but a purpose was better. Bob Ryan had a purpose to serve. And he gave his time even when he was sick and tired, he said, I need to do it one more year because my people still need some stuff. So I tell you that Bob loved his family. He loved this General Assembly, but most of all, he loved his people. All of this he loved that he just wanted to serve. So Bob was not only my friend, he was a friend of Georgia. Good evening. Bob is true, was a true friend of mine. Uh, we 
we met a long time ago when Bob was in radio. And uh, when I ran for the house again, Bob came by the house. I hadn't seen him in a long time. He came by the house and brought me a check. Bob was the kind of guy that you couldn't get angry with long, could stay angry with long. I remember when I passed my first bill in the house, and a Republican wrote another bill to override my bill. Bob voted with the Republicans. And I was mad with Bob for a long time. But I couldn't stay mad on my way home one Friday, on a rainy day, on I-75, a tree fell out of the forest on his car and told his car. And as I passed, I said, that's Bob. So I stopped and got out and went back to check on him. From that day forward, we were best friends. I talked to Bob on Monday night. And Bob concerned was coming back on Tuesday to be on the floor of the house. But I knew then that Bob was not coming back. We talked about a month ago, and Bob was talking about peace and tranquility in his life. And when some person is talking about it, all they want is peace and tranquility. You know what they're thinking. And I told him, I said, Bob, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me. I said, we've done too much together. Don't give up, give up on me. And he ignored me. From that day forward, I knew that Bob knew that time was short. And on Monday night, we talked. Monday night before he died, we talked for about an hour, hour and a half. And that was the last time I talked with Bob. And last night, as I talked with his wife for about an hour, we were laughing about how we used to do Bob. Bob would never admit that he was wrong. So there was no sense of arguing with him. So you let him go do wrong until he figured out, oh, this is not right. And you let him go with that. And that's the kind of guy he was. And he was a true friend. I think that Bob's suffering is over. He's gone where he's supposed to be, and that's with the Lord. And I ask everybody to make sure you keep Bob in your prayers as he goes on to the Lord. And, have, and I trust that everybody in this room have a true friend like Bob Ryan. Thank you.
He weighed 98 pounds. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say about that. But our master ceremonies, uh, Mr. Ryan Cameron, this is two time, that's right, two time Emmy winner, is the host of the Ryan Cameron Morning Show with Wanda Smith from the number one urban radio station in the country, B103, Atlanta. He is the first African-American public address announcer in the history of Atlanta Hawks. His career was cemented in 2015 when he was inducted into the Georgia Radio Hall of Fame. He is the founder of the Ryan Cameron Foundation, which is a gay scholar from his Leadership Academy. The husband and father of three has a signature event, the Father Daughter Dance, held on Father's Day, which will be held on Sunday, June 19, 2016, at the Delta Flight Museum for more than 700 dads and daughters. I mean, does it have to be an age on your daughter? I have daughter, I have two daughters too. No age limit, so if your daughter is like my daughter, who is 20 and 16, you all can, can bring them. Yeah. Ryan Cameron, gentlemen, I want you all to know that Ryan Cameron is who he is, and he gives a lot to this community. Our master ceremony, Ryan Cameron, thank you. searching for new talent on Atlanta radio station Hot 1079 and was handpicked from over 500 applicants to join our co-host on air. Founder of Sporty Girls, a nonprofit organization that encourages personal growth in non-traditional sports, a member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority, please welcome Ms. Rashawn Ali.
I would like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I would like to call up Michaela Stewart to sing the national anthem. She's only eight years old, so let's just give
but we all be sleepless until we accomplish our God-given purpose. And may everyone be anointed with power from above to do more tomorrow than we did today. And in the time to come, let us all vote and do the right thing. In the name of the one who beat everything, including death, and told us we can do it too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Reverend Richard Allen Washington. Right now, we would like to invite to the podium Senator Gloria Butler, who will recognize the constitutional officers and elected officials and special guests here this evening. Senator Butler. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce the members of the General Assembly, and special guests. Senator Tanya Cook from Nebraska. Where are you, Tanya? Let us see you. Yvette Harvey, Ambassador Steve Allen, Representative Erica Thomas, Senator Lester Jackson, Representative Al Williams, Representative Calvin Smiley, Senator Don Zella James, Senator Ed Harbison, Mayor Johnny Ed Edward Johnson, Mayor Mario Avery, Representative Trey Rhodes, Representative Sean Blackman, Senator Butch Miller, former Senator C. Miles, CEO Tracy Harris, publisher of Gospel Tribune, Mr. Creed of the Atlanta Business Chronicle, Dr. Julian Adams Burt, she's the president elect of Atlanta Medical Association. Cynthia Blanford, she's the Honorary Consul General of Liberia, and Michael Thurman, candidate for CEO of DeKalb County. Thank you. I probably missed some of our legislators, so if I did, would you please stand and wave your hand? I hear forks clinking. According to the program, the invocation is not the grace, which is coming in a minute. So if you are clinking forks, you have jumped the shark. The invocation, not the grace, according to the program. Next up, we will have greetings from Representative Al Williams. Representative. I want you to know I dropped my fall. I sure did. I can hear good. As I greet you this evening, let me do this first in the interest of protocol. Let me to those former chairs of the Legislative Black Caucus that are present. Although he's been introduced, he was not introduced as a former chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, and that's our friend. Michael Thurman, a former chair who did an excellent job. Y'all can, can give it up for him. He's still with us. Former chair Ed 
Harperson, former chair of the Legislative Black Caucus. Former Chair Emmanuel, Emmanuel Jones, Emmanuel's my friend and I've been brain dead, that's what happens when you cross 60. Former Chair Emmanuel Jones, thank you Emmanuel. And our former Chair Dean of the House, former Chair Kevin Smarry who opened us up. Thank you Calvin. We greet you this evening. We greet you on behalf of our chair, Chair Lady Lee Dalton Hagler, who's doing an excellent job. We greet you in a time of great, great disturbance in America. We greet you anyhow. We greet you in a time where in spite of our fights to open up this country, there's talk about putting up a border, but we still greet you. We greet you in a time when we've forgotten about Ellis Island and called the Rio Grande a shame, but we still greet you. We greet you in a time when there is no bridle on the mouths, when there is no respect for women, when there is talk of all kinds of foolishness by a national party who calls themselves a national party, but we still greet you. We greet you in a time when there is hatred, we greet you in a time when there's disrespect for our president, but we still greet you because we respect him. We all ought to give it up now. We greet you in a time when through many struggles and many fights, there's still a lack of respect. We greet you in a time when as a young African-American growing up, not being able to eat at Woolworths. We still preach in a time that I grew up to vote for a president, Barack Hussein Obama. We still preach it. We preach in a time when Big Mama scrubbed clothes for ten dollars a week. We greet you in a time for all of these African-American executives from AT&T, UPS, and all Fortune 500 companies. Ain't God all right? We greet you. We greet you because we walk into a place where just a few years ago, before this facility was built, if we came in, we came in in white jackets as service, but we come tonight sitting at the head table, ain't God all right? We've come tonight. We've come when we were not even on radio, much less television, and we got an MC and a beautiful lady. Ain't we greeting you tonight? Now some of you might not be happy because you never struggled. I'm happy because 17 times in jail in the civil rights movement beat unconscious in Selma, Alabama. All I can say is hallelujah and I'm glad to greet you. And we forget from where we've come. We lose our way on where we're headed. Just as the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, we crossed the Edmund Pettus Bridge and I greet you tonight. To God be the glory. We're so glad to have you here. You're looking good. You're standing tall. You're smelling good. And everybody needs to know we ain't going nowhere. To God be the glory. Now that's how you greet the people. Thank you so much. Representative Al Williams. Right now, uh, to, I would like to bring to the podium Senator Vincent Fort and Senator Gail Davenport to introduce the Georgia Legislator Black Caucus members. So let us give them a hearty round of applause. That's not hearty. That's not hearty. Thanks. Good evening. Hold it. I just got here, you can't be bad at me. I say good evening. All right, it's good to be with you. It is my honor to be able to introduce my colleagues in the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. It's an honor not just because it's the largest black caucus in the country, numbering over 60 members, 
Size isn't everything. It is an honor because, just think about it. If something happens good in Georgia, it's usually because of the people we have assembled here at the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. If something good happens in Georgia, the Black Caucus is somewhere in it. If you, believe, if you believe it was a good thing to pass an anti-predatory lending law in Georgia, thank the Black Caucus. If you think it was a good thing to pass the state's first hate crimes law, thank the Black Caucus, because without this caucus, without the diligence and perseverance of these people, you would not have had such a law. If you're glad that we changed the flag from a symbol of hate to a symbol of unity, thank the Black Caucus. So it's not only an honor and it's a thrill to be able to introduce not just colleagues in the struggle, but friends in the struggle. I'm going to ask each and every member of the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus now sitting under the Gold Dome to please stand and be recognized with a round of applause. Thank you kindly. And now for our occasion and recognition of our awesome interns, we would like to invite Representative D. Dawkins Hagler to provide the occasion as to why we are here tonight. And she is the awesome chairwoman of this event as well. So as she continues, D. Hey, Miss D. Y'all give it up for Miss D. Come on, y'all. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me tell y'all something. This is a party. This is a celebration. And I don't know what's going on in this room, but y'all got to get yourselves together because you did not pay $150 for a ticket to be sitting down looking like me. Now, we don't spend too much money for y'all to carry on. Carry on, you carry on, you carry on. Carry on. And then plus, I done bought this dress. Y'all better act like y'all having some fun in this place tonight. Now, now, so, we've come a long way, but we still have a long, long way to go. So the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus is the compass, the moral compass of the General Assembly. Because we have been through so much as a people that we had to have a voice that represented the masses of our people. Now we're sitting in places that we only could have dreamed about many years ago. And so I'm excited of what we have done in the Black Caucus, especially since I've been there in the past eight years. And I had the privilege to serve under two of the previous chairs here tonight. And I want y'all to know that I've made it a, a special mission to have all of the past chairs that are still in the General Assembly to, to be up here tonight so that you can see them. Because none of us are an island. We all get to places because someone has helped us to get to that place. And so I'm just ecstatic that I can stand here in front of you today to tell you why you're here today. So our theme is our heritage, our history. A salute to African Americans in the sports, ad, and entertainment. And why is that important? So you all know that this is the 20th year of the Olympics that was here in Atlanta. And that was to celebrate the 100th year of the Olympics that happened worldwide. But well, just think, African Americans did all, not always participate in the sports just like they did not participate in medicine and in law and in other things. And so we thought it not probably to have them here today because had it not been for some people integrating sports, because many people think that sports is the fabric of America. Some people say that apple pie is, you know, baseball is just as good as apple pie. Well, let me tell you, if you could not play on a team or your child was relegated to the back of a stadium or a back of an arena, then it wasn't like apple pie to us. 
So we have to salute those who came before us, like Charles Cooper, who was the first person in the NBA in 1950, or Jackie Robinson, who integrated baseball, or Kenny Washington, who integrated the NFL. And then we have actors here today. And I'm so glad that our actors don't have to be in the show. The first black show was Amos and Andy. And we have come a long way from the mystery show. At least I like to think that, but we do still have some black folks that act like they're in a mystery show. But that's not for this conversation right now. We've just come a long, 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 long way. And so it's up to us as the black caucus to make sure that we train the next generation of leaders. And so right now, I'm getting ready to do something for you all. I'm getting ready to show you the next generation of leaders. The Black Caucus is very proud of our internship program. And this year, we have the largest group of interns that have ever served under the Gold Dome. And I'm so proud of these young people because they represent so many schools across the state of Georgia, as far as West Georgia, all the way to the other side of the Augusta State. And these students, they come to the Capitol to learn from us because it's not enough for us to serve. We have to make sure that we equip them so that they can take our places one day. Now, not tomorrow, but one day. And so our young people, our internship program, look at that, has gotten them ready. And I'm not going to tell you what our little kids did. I love you, baby. Each and every one is like them, my children. Some of them went online, honey. They done break the runway to get their dresses for the night. They ready. I know y'all don't even know what that is, do you? I'm going to help y'all. Rent the runway is where you can go online and rent a dress for an event and send that thing back because you don't want to spend that much money. These babies, honey, they done went, to, they done went all out for tonight. And then we're proud of them. So I want to introduce to you this generation that's going to take us to the next level because every generation, we should go higher and higher. We should be wiser and wiser. And so here we go. We're going to start off with Yatana Amos. Now come up and wave at the people. Don't y'all run across the stage fast. This year, the last year, the baby ran fast. Y'all give it up as my baby come across the stage. London Baskin. D'Angelo Bowen. Justin Brooks. Marcus Burke, Kareem Bush, Chantel Cannibal, Roman Carter II, Jaleel Clark, Thomas Darby, Naomi Delva, Justin Edge, Ebony Ellis. Aaliyah Francis, Bria Harden Boyd, Michelette Hayward, Melexis Johnson, Nicholas Johnson, Hillian Jones, Kyra Felicus, Jillian Lee.
cheated. I'm so proud of them. So they're keeping up their GBAs, they're coming to learn about the political movement, and some of them are right now trying to pledge fraternities and sororities. And I tell each and every last one of them, if they don't get any sleep and think they're not getting ready to show up still to do their hours per week, I'm going well, they just better show up, because hazing is illegal. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> it's illegal. What other serious though? I just want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. This really means a lot to me and to the Black Caucus, because I could not do anything I do without this Black Caucus. And then I want to do one thing. I want to thank the co-chair of this gala tonight, Representative Dewey McClain, and all of those who serve on the uh, gala committee. And if you all would stand up for me now, all of those of you who served on the committee, that means if you served on the committee, even if you didn't do it, no, I'm just kidding. So stand up, because we love you. I appreciate each and every last one of you. Thank you. Last but not least, please, please come back next year. I am so glad that each year we are growing and growing and growing. And next year, hopefully, we will have the entire, we'll have to knock out the other side of the wall uh, to have the Black Caucus gala. This is my fourth, fourth year as the chair, the fourth year uh, having a ha heritage dinner. And I'm so proud to be a chair of this caucus, not just the largest caucus, but the best and baddest Black Caucus in the nation. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Let me give a, uh, a shout out to AJ, the DJ. Even though it wasn't about the music, obviously he is a Southern man, because if you are a Southern man, you recognize the first thing you're supposed to do is when the women come up on the stage to help them, and you jumped up there and did it without any prompting. And as a Grady baby, the man from Atlanta, I recognize your Southern swag, brother. Because none of y'all didn't jump up. Some of the younger boys had their video cameras because if the ladies would have failed, they would have been on world star hip hop. Well, it's a video channel where people fall and fight. And instead of helping somebody, you just let them fall and then you post it for likes. I'll let that marinate. It's all right. It's, they turn that air off, which I'm appreciative of. They turn it back on, which I, They turn it back on. Well, it's in, it's in, it's in stipends. Um, nothing says intern or uh, African American like the last one with a name like Rashida. She was the last one. Give it up for Rashida again. She was the last one. Now, those of you who have hot sauce in your bag swag have started eating too early. Because now it's time for the grace. Hey, shame on you. The worst grace I ever heard was at a family reunion about 20 years ago when we all gathered hands and my wife had a friend come from Maryland who, because she was there as a guest, got the chance to say the grace and we all bowed our heads and were very thankful and she said, Lord, do it. So I'm sure that we're about to hear something very, very uh, insightful and thankful from Representative Dexter Sharp as he comes to say the grace. Uh, first of all, giving on the spirit of Christ is the head of my life, and also giving on it to my wife. Men, you always have to. Acknowledge your wife. Stand up, baby, stand up. I don't care if she almost out the door, you acknowledge your wife. Or you gonna be in trouble later on. And also my legislative manager, Joshua Butler. But this time we're gonna, I'm gonna have to say two prayers. One for the grace and the love and for the people that's gonna get sick for starting meeting too early. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless this food that we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. We ask you to bless this hand to prepare this food. 
And God, just give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding we need in order to continue to serve your people. In your precious name we pray. Amen. I'm excited to give awards to my favorite sport. If it's baseball, I'm watching. If I'm not there in the stadium, I'm eyeballing the TV. Our first baseball legend is Marty Perez. Marty Perez signed his first professional contract with the Los Angeles Angels in 1964, just out of high school. He played in the minor leagues until 1969, when he was called to the Angels. In 1970, he was traded to the Atlanta Braves for the 1971 season as a shortstop. In 1976, he was traded to the San Francisco Giants for a year, then traded again in 1977 to the New York Yankees. Three months later, he was traded to the Oakland A's, where he played for a year and a half before being released. In 1974, Marty led the National League in fielding at second base with eight errors. In 1975, he had no errors. Marty's lifetime average was 250. He has had the pleasure of playing with Henry Aaron, Phil Negro, and playing against players like Robert Clemente, Orlando Cepeda, Nolan Ryan, Bob Gibson, Juan, Steve Carlton, Pete Rose, and Red Machine. Marty is married, has two daughters and four grandchildren. Please give Marty a round of applause. Please. Public advocate for the YMCA. 
the American Diabetes Association and Boy Scouts of, of America. He has been honored as the Boy Scout Speech of an Athletic Road Model Award and inducted into the Virginia Hall of Fame as well as the University of Richmond Hall of Fame. I know it was long, but I just had to say it all. I like you. Brian, if you don't get this lady a hug and a picture, she would have read everything about you. He was born a poor black child. Did she say she couldn't wait for the game to end so she could watch? This is creepy to me. Look, 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 she wants another picture. Right? She like you. She done combined three or four other people by you and put it in yours. I did not know you were the 44th president of the United States of America. Yes.
and player clinics, over 250 coaches attended, and her coaches clinics, and over 250 serious athletes trained live in the player development program. In 2015, Debbie was inducted into the New England Basketball Hall of Fame for her accomplishments as an athlete and her ongoing contribution to the development of young athletes and coaches. In January of 2013, Debbie launched the first children's book of the series, Play With Heart. These colorful, entertaining books focus on both character and skill development for young children. These books are ideal for inspiring and teaching boys and girls in grades K through five. In addition to many years of experience as an educated coach, Debbie has television sports. She does television sports color commentator, consults with church sports programs, and is much sought after motivational speaker. Outside of the world of business and basketball, Debbie has traveled with a comedy a comedy troupe called The Clean District Comics and plays keyboard in a gospel and jazz R&B band. Debbie is a very multi-talented and dynamic individual. It's her strong faith, love of the game, and commitment to young people that drives her vision at top of the key. Let's welcome Debbie Miller Ty Palmore. And now, to present our honorees and entertainment, I would like to invite Senator Emmanuel Jones to the podium. Clap, clap, clap. Clap, y'all. Clap, do it. Give us a few. Come on now. <laughs> Thank you, and I am delighted to be here to present the awards and entertainment. And I'm going a little bit out of order because there's a very special person that's being recognized. And my colleague, Senator, come on up here, Senator Davenport is going to join me in presenting the awards to the entertainers. And I'm going to start with someone who I met a few months ago, when I got a call from a really good friend of mine who said, we need a house to shoot a movie about a young man that's supposed to be something related to digital lives. And I had to go back and check with my kids to kind of understand exactly what this movie was about. So this good friend of mine said, yeah, it won't take much. They have about five or 10 people, and not a big deal. Well, I agreed, and I had a chance to come back home in the middle of this television shoot. And I think they had about 30 or 40 people there. They had about 50 trucks parked, and they actually took over my own. So I am delighted and excited to recognize a really good friend of mine, Ms. Terry J. Vaughn, on her many accomplishments. In the program, in your program is a long list of accomplishments from Ms. Vaughn, and I would be remiss if I did not just, if I didn't read a few of them to you. Terry Vaughn is the first soul, first stole America's heart with her lovable portrayal of Lavita Alize Jenkins on the Steve Harvey Show. There you go, give it up. After that, she made her way to the real school executive produce all of us as a school teacher, Janelle. And then as Renee, a sexy, sassy, and hilarious nurse. I love those roles. On Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns. Now Terry can be seen as release the nonsense house manager of Oprah Winfrey's new drama series, Greenleaf, alongside legendary Lynn Winfield and Keith David. She's a good friend, so she won't mind if I take these liberties here from her professional, her first professional job in a uh, 20 city tour of Telling It Like It Tears. This San Francisco native has proven herself as a talent to be reckoned with. Terry's been honored with three, and I repeat, three NAACP Image Awards for Outstanding Supporting Actress for her work on the Steve Harvey Show. She was also nominated for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a drama series for her work on Soul Food. 
as Eva Holly doing a multi-episode guest on the groundbreaking series, included on Terry's resume in the Tyler Perry film, Daddy's Little Girl. I tell you, her accomplishments are many. But down at the very bottom of your bio in your program, you will see that uh, Terry is a person who's, as she says, always pushing to grow creatively. Terry completed a film directed debut January 2016. I think they're still working on that movie, by the way. With the hilarious poems. We wrapped up. That's hilarious. And this is the company, the Friday-ish company. And it's called Digital Lives Matter. And I'm sure it's going to be in theaters, I think, in May. Outstanding. My good friend, certainly an entertainment legend, Miss Terry J. Brown. I am just so honored to highlight an entertainer legend, Mr. Terrence T.J. Carson. Terrence T.J. Carson is a jazz vocalist, voiceover artist, and actor best known for his portrayal of the debonair Kyle Barker on the hit sitcom Living Single. T.C.'s five years then on that show earned him two NAACP Award nominations for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. TC's newest album, I Live in Beverly Hills, as well as one, his one-of-a-kind rendition of the jazz standard, My Funny Time, Valentine, are both available on Nine Times, Amazon, P3, and Spotify. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Terrence T.J. Carson. Entertainment legends, Mr. 
Carl Anthony Payne. Mr. Payne is a successful actor, producer, director. He was born in a small town in Clinton, South Carolina. He began working towards his acting career as a young age by studying at the first All Children's Theater, which was an off-Broadway repertory theater company. He later attended Fiorella H. LaGuardia High School of Music and Art and Performing Arts in New York City. And yes, Mr. Payne, we want you to come up and join us the entire time. Mr. Payne continued his education and training at Howard University in Washington, D.C. He is best known for his recurring role as Theo Hustable's best friend, Cockroach, on the ever-popular classic in the hit series, The Cosby Show, and on Cole Brown on the Fox Network TV series, Mark. There you go. <laughs> And he's also continues his dis continues to display his versatility on screen by playing roles such as Ronaldo St. James on the popular BET series The Game, to most recently renowned producer L.A. Reid in VH Ones and TC Biography. He has been he has directed and produced music videos, web series, short films. I think he's acting now for us, by the way. And while confirming to showcase, go right ahead. We don't mind. The stand-up company in different cities is a longtime resident of Los Angeles, California, now resides in Atlanta, Georgia. Payne has, has remained relevant among peers by his continued pursuit of excellence and commitment to legacy. Aside from being on the big screen, Payne's community is really rich for the job organization is never ended. And I love this about him, his advice to young aspiring actors and professionals. Perseverance is the hard work to do that. You're tired of doing the hard work you already did. Give it up one more time. I entertain the legend.
daughter of legendary high school football coach Buck Godfrey from Southwest Camp High School, when it was still reputable. No shade. Anyway, thank you, Dwayne McLean. Go on up to the podium. No <laughs> shade. Sorry. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, the first football legend is Stephen. Is Stevie Bags. Where's Stevie? Stevie's outside. Stevie Bags Jr. Oh, that's Stevie Bags Jr. Stevie Bags Jr. There he is. Check Stevie out. Black guy. Stevie. Uh, Stevie played ten years in the NFL, uh, and also Stevie played uh, some, uh, some some movie. He played on it. Uh, Tyler Perry for better or worse. Uh, season 3 and uh, if anything going on with Steven and Steven wrote a book Steven, that you? Okay, let me look again Alright, Steven Brad, get Steven in here He is a football legend, Steven played TV in there and his mom's here somewhere, where is his mom? Miss 
Saul's wife's here too. They think, there you go, get up and take some pictures. No, but she's been around, she's been truly around. Okay. The uh, next football legend is Clarence Scott. Clarence, Clarence was born to Mrs. Clarence and, and Dorothy Scott in Decatur, Georgia. He, so he's a, he is what we call a real native. Clarence was the first round draft pick of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Clarence was just recently inducted into the Atlanta Sports Hall of Fame uh, two weeks ago. And he's also a member of the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame, which he was elected in 1999. Clarence Scott. A local. He came to born and bred. He played with Jim Brown. Okay. Glory did play with Jim Brown.
27 feet barrier and the long jump before the 1960 National Collegiate Athletic Association title with the long jump as a student while attending Tennessee State University. In August of the same year, he won the world record of the event held by Jesse Owens for 25 years. Already the world record holder, he improved the mark past 27 feet, jumping 27 and a half after the best of the race on May 27. He qualified for the Olympics in Rome, but he broke and took the gold medal in the long jump set in the Olympic record for 8.12 millimeters. So here we would like to introduce Ralph Harold Boston, please give him a hand for his accomplishments. Thank you. And now to present a very special award, I'd like to bring to the podium Representative Erica Thomas. Thank you so much. This award is a very, very special award. And I would like to say, even me being one of the youngest representatives of America, I know all of her songs. This award goes to, the Entertainment Legend Award goes to Angie Stone. This is a Grammy nominated for three Grammys Grammy nominated artist. She has had four top ten albums, including a number one album, ten singles on the top ten. And let me just say this we are here celebrating the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. And Angie Stone makes sure she celebrates our black brothers. Because my favorite song by her is Black Brother. I love you. I'll never try. I heard you. Okay, I ain't gonna do no more. The, caucus, the, the chairwoman is looking at me. I ain't gonna sing no more. That's not my talent. I just legislate, make laws. But I will say more about Angie Stone. Her father, a member of a local gospel quartet, would take Stone to see performances by gospel artists, stars such as the Singing Angels, the Gospel Keynotes. And Angie Stone's first claim to fame was her membership in the sequence an all-female trio and recording pioneer hip-hop label Sugar Hill. And her first single was Funk You Up. Everybody knows about that. I won't go any longer, but let's give a great round of applause to my favorite artist, Angie Stone. Thank you, Ryan. This is a very, very special moment for me to kind of share with you a production company started by two people that have broken so many barriers. The Nina Holiday Entertainment Company is a United States-based full-service production subsidiary serving the motion picture, broadcast network, advertising, and corporate communication industries. You all know what I'm talking about, so I'm going to read this, and I just want all of you at your table to start making your way up here because we want to celebrate your accomplishments. This company was founded in 2005 by Miss Terry Vaughn and Miss Cassie Rubino. The company was named after two iconic African-American women in the history of entertainment. And I know they're here being supported by so many of their friends and family, and I'm going to ask if they want to join you, Ricky Hughes, to join you up here as well. And I'm also being told that Ricky Hughes produced the BET Awards. So they thought so much of these two iconic African-American women, three, I'm talking about Nina Holiday now, 
the noted activist and singer Nina Simone and jazz legend Billie Holiday. Those two ladies, those are what I'm talking about. And these women broke barriers and stereotypes in order to become really true artists and live their dream. You see, they didn't settle. They persevered and in spite of controversy, they still pushed towards perfecting their craft. These ladies that you see in front of you upheld those women as icons and when decided to come together in one number of couldn't think of a better combination. So in 2015, the company partnered with longtime producer Ricky Hughes to round out the Nina Holiday team. Now I gotta read the rest of this because I think we're beginning to see something historic here in what these young, talented ladies are doing. In 2005, the production company Owner for a title was the birth of Nina Holiday Entertainment. NHE is responsible for several successful productions, including Between Sisters, the highest rated show to air on the GMC Network, and the 2013 NAACP Image Award nominated Sugar Moms. They are just a couple of the projects Terry created, starred in, and produced. In 2014, NHE released the family film Hamlet and Hutch, starring legendary Burt Reynolds and more recently Girlfriends, Gateway 1 and 2, produced by and starring Tara Dawn, Melinda Williams, Graciela Bovos and Excellence Atkins. Their company has been featured in Ebony Magazine. 2012 is one of the top companies in the new Hollywood of the South. As supervising producers, the production team has worked on the Soul Train Awards, the BET Awards, Ed's Written, Rip the Runway, Bill Bellamy's Who's Got Jokes, and then the team has done so much work, groundbreaking work in their field, and the Legislative Black Caucus is honored to recognize these pioneering women in their production, Nina Holiday Production Company. Congratulations. And what can we say? We love you. Y'all know it's late, so guess what? I'm ready to close this out because it's time to go home. Hey, hey, we're going to listen to some music. But before I do that, I want to recognize someone in the room. Khalif Shaquille, will you stand up for one second? Khalif Shaquille and I are working on a documentary right now. It is called The Back Page um, Black Girls Die Too, The Back Page Murders. And what we're doing is we're shining a light on human trafficking and the women that are getting killed, the young black girls that are actually getting killed because of human trafficking. So I want y'all to look it up. He also did a, uh, the story of the Kendrick Johnson uh, death, uh, Justice for Kendrick Johnson. And if y'all remember, that's the young boy who died and rolled up in the rest of that. He did the documentary on that. So I believe we want to thank you for working with the Black Caucus and working with me on that documentary. But thank you all for coming out. We appreciate you. We need you. We love you. We will see you back here next year, the fourth Thursday in February. God bless you. Travel. I want to thank our MCs. Let me tell you, they were the bomb Yes, tonight was a very exciting night. It was packed to capacity. People were here to celebrate the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus. We are an organization that is put in place to uplift the black community. We are 61 members strong. And so tonight we got to celebrate many people from the sports and entertainment industry, as well as recognizing our 2016 interns. So we're just so grateful to uh, be here tonight and to have wonderful people like Ms. Ali, who was one of our MCs, <laughs> along with Ryan Cameron. That's right. So thank you, and that's a recap of tonight. Next year, look for us the fourth uh, Thursday in February 2017. Don't know the location, but save the day. Thank you. Miss D is amazing. That's all I got to say. I, I wasn't even supposed to be here right now. She said it all. Y'all give it up for Miss D. <laughs>